All right, good evening, sisters and brothers, and um, welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It's, it's Wednesday evening, Wednesday the 9th of February. And so let us bring this day to a close with prayer and meditation on the Word of God. Let's pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. I love you, O oh Lord, my God, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress and my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice in his temple, and my cry came to his ears. He parted the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew. He came flying on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering round about him dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion from the brightness of his presence through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fire the lord also thundered out of heaven the most high uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire you will save a lowly people and bring down the high looks of the proud. You shall also light my candle. The Lord my God shall make my darkness to be bright. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you, you hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, 
You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Remember your promise of mercy to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Remember your promise of mercy to Abraham and his children forever. And the collect. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our, our psalm for this evening is Psalm 119, 119, from verse 33 to 56. Psalm 119, from 33 to 56. Psalm 119. <clears throat> the refrain, my delight shall be in your commandments. Teach me, O Lord, the way of, of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for therein is my delight. Incline your heart to your testimonies. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to unjust gain. Turn away my eyes, lest they gaze on vanities, or give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which stands for all who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments, in your righteousness, give me life. Let your faithful love come upon me, O Lord, even your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I answer those who taunt me, for my trust is in your word. O take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your judgments. So shall I always keep your law. I shall keep it forever and ever. I shall walk, I will walk at liberty because I study your commandments. I will tell of your testimonies even before kings and will not be ashamed. My delight shall be in your commandments which I have greatly loved. My hands will I lift up to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Remember your word to your servant, on which you have built my hope. 
This is my comfort in my trouble, that your promise gives me life. Hallelujah. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned aside from your law. I have remembered your everlasting judgments, O Lord, and have been comforted. I am seized with indignation at the wicked, for they have forsaken your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me in the house of my pilgrimage. I have thought on your name in the night, O Lord, and so have I kept your law. These blessings have been mine, for I have kept your commandments. My delight shall be in your commandments. And our prayer, God of loving mercy, in this place of our pilgrimage, turn your laws into songs that we may find your promises fulfilled in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Of course, as you know, Psalm 119 is all about the word of God, the law, the statutes, the judgments, the, 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 the testimony the word of God. All of these are synonyms for God's word. And it's just every, every, you could say every sentence, every verse is packed with delight for the word of God. Verse 47, my delight shall be in your commandments, which I have greatly loved. My hands will I lift up to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. This, this is a psalmist's desire for God's word, for God's law, for God's statutes. Um, lead me, verse 35, lead me in the path of your commandments, for therein is my delight in the commandments of the Lord. Verse 37 Turn away my eyes, lest they gaze on vanities. Oh, give me life in your ways. In other words, let me focus on you. Turn my eyes away from, from vanities, from the things of this world, the things that fleeting, the fleeting things, the, the temporary passing things. Let my eyes gaze on you, on your word, on your ways. Amen. Let's move on. I could go on with that, but let's move on to our New Testament reading, which is John chapter 15 from verse 18 to the end. John 15, 18 to the end. <clears throat> Jesus said, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them the works, if I had not done among them the works no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have seen and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill, 
fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. And Jesus is talking specifically to his disciples, of course, and there's some extension to us. Um, we know he's talking to his disciples because he talks about the fact that they will testify about him because they have been with him from the beginning. These are the, the, the disciples whom he called. And he's saying they, they will bear witness to Christ as, 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 um, as disciples who, as followers who walked with Christ, who were there with him, who, who they can testify that they have seen him and touched him and, and so on. Uh, and, and so Jesus said, they, just like the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is coming and he's going to testify about Christ. He's going to, he's going to proclaim Christ. So the disciples are to testify about Christ, proclaim him. And of course, by extension, we too have got the same ministry of testifying about him. We are not like the Holy Spirit. We are not to testify about ourselves. We are not to justify ourselves. We, our, our responsibility, our calling, sisters and brothers, is to testify about Jesus. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is here to testify about Jesus. And if we have the Holy Spirit in us, we will testify about him as well. We are not here to testify about ourselves. We are not here to, to exalt ourselves. We are here. We are believers. We are called and chosen by Jesus to exalt him and him alone. And so Jesus started by saying that when we do this, we are going to be hated by the world. In fact, the world will not love us. The world will will persecute us because the world persecute him and again whatever happens to him will happen to us if we if we testify about him because when we proclaim Christ the world do not want to hear about Christ if we talk about ourselves that's fine if we talk about anything else, that's fine. But when we proclaim Christ, the world has no interest in Christ. And so the world will hate us, will persecute us because we are proclaiming the name of Jesus. And Jesus says that if they persecute him, they will persecute us because we stand with him in solidarity so whoever hates me hates my father as well verse 23 if i had not done among them the works no one else did they would not be guilty of sin as it is they have seen and yet they have hated both me and my father and right there he's speaking specifically about the jewish community the the jewish leaders uh, they have seen his miracles they have seen in the work seated, and yet they rejected him. And Jesus' point is that they reject him because they don't know God. They don't know his father. And sisters and brothers, this is a fundamental point that Jesus is making. There are many people who claim that they know God, but they're not interested in Jesus. You see, you can't. Jesus is saying you can't have one without the other. If you hate him, you also hate God. Because Jesus represents God. Jesus represents the Father. Jesus is here on behalf of the Father. And so when we, when we turn against, when, when the world, when, when the world turns against Christ, it is turning against God. In fact, when it turns against us, it is turning against Christ. And in turning against Christ, it is turning against God. In fact, um, verse, verse, um, 
uh, verse, which verse is it now? Verse, verse 21. They will treat you this way because of my name. That's what I'm looking for. They will treat you this way because of my name. The world will hate us because of Jesus. The world will persecute us because of Jesus. Because we bear the name Christ. Because we bear the name Christian. Sisters and brothers, Jesus is teaching us that we are not to be surprised when we are hated by the world. In fact, if we are loved by the world, that's when we are to be surprised. Because the world doesn't love Jesus. And if the world loves us, it means that we are not truly representing the name of Christ. Sisters and brothers, these are sober words and we need to really think hard about our relationship to the world. The church, the church stands in opposition to the world. And if the church becomes loved by the world, it means, therefore, the church is doing something wrong because Jesus is not loved by the world. And if we bear his name, we too will be hated by the world. And so may God help us to stand for the name of Jesus only, whatever persecution may come our way. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful for the, your word. We thank you, Lord, that you have chosen us out of the world. You have placed your name upon us. The name of Christ is written on our, on our hearts, on our foreheads and in our hands. And so, Lord, we are sealed by your name. And so, Lord, we thank you for calling us. But, Lord, we, we are reminded that if we, if we truly bear your name, we will be persecuted. We will, we will be hated by those who hate you, by those who persecute you. We will be persecuted ourselves. So we ask for strength. We ask that you will help us to live up to the name, whatever may happen, whatever may come. Give us grace, O oh God, that we will bear the name of Christ faithfully, whatever circumstances we may be in. We pray, especially for those Christians who are currently, at this very moment, facing persecution and hatred from others in their community, maybe family, maybe even governmental systems because they bear the name of Christ. We think of Christians in various parts of the Middle East. We think of Christians in Asia. We think of Christians in North Korea. We think of Christians in China. We think of Christians in Northern Nigeria. We, we remember Christians in the Sudan and the Congo and in Kenya. Many are in communities in which to be a Christian can be a matter of life and death. And so, Lord, remember them tonight, we pray. Those who bear your name faithfully, even in the midst of hate and hostility and persecution. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer tonight. Amen. So we pray, we continue to thank God for his goodness and mercy to us sinners as we come to the end of another day. We pray that the Lord will be with those who are sick tonight. We pray that the Lord will be with our sister Hannah, Todd, Jean Murphy, Deborah, Vesna's mom and family. We pray also the Lord, O oh God, that you will be with those on our prayer list like Dion and Jane, Lindsay, Dion and, and Jane and Sue, and Muriel. Lord, we pray for these, your children. 
We pray for uh, Pauline's friend, Vesna, her husband, Mokund. We pray for Ella's daughter, Wendy. We pray, we pray for uh, David and Bernadette Hoyt. So Lord, hear our prayer for these your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And um, another night prayer, evening prayer tonight. Our Father, we come to you at the ending of the day with thankful hearts to commit ourselves and those we love to your care and protection for the coming night. Lift from our minds every burden, every anxiety, every fear, and in your great mercy give us sleep and rest to fit us for the duties of another day. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and rest. Blessing tonight, sisters and brothers, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.